here today. My name is Pastor Cenelia Sonaby Key. I'm the senior pastor here at Parkway, Parkway Christian Church. We are located in the hubbub of Springfield, Illinois. We are directly across from Walmart right off of Veterans. Parkway has a long history of being a faith forward community that is unafraid to challenge com conventional uh, ways and to stretch toward the impossible. We are an opening and affirming justice seeking faith community. We welcome all and all means all. If this is your first time joining us, we're glad to have you here with us. If you've been with us for a while, we're going to encourage you. We're glad you're here. We're also going to encourage everyone to like, comment, and share uh, on your page. So we have a few announcements. Today, there is a church picnic at 5 o'clock. Bring your own bag, your own blanket, your own chair, your own mask, and we'll be practicing uh, social distancing. We have a lot going on in the month of October. We will be getting the first phase of our church-wide study. Um, so if you haven't already signed up, we want to encourage you to sign up for all three courses because they kind of build into one another, so you don't want to miss that. Um, so the first part of our three-part series will start uh, in October. So call the front office if you have any any questions about that. So some good news, just some housekeeping. We are so excited to have our volunteer tech work group. It's The group has grown and grown and grown and we're super proud of everyone. The board has decided that we will have a part-time uh, video, audio, social media person. So if you know someone who might be interested in that, uh, please go to our Facebook page and you'll find more information about that. So some few forward Thing, forward things that are coming forward um, so when I got here we started work groups 
So we had the 101 work group, which was designed to sort of help me get acclimated to sort of the church body. Then we had the emergency preparedness work group, which was uh, helped to designed to sort of help us figure out how to navigate church and life during the COVID. Um, we had the web work group, we had the tech work group. And so now we have the Advent work group and we also have the reader writer work group, which is helping we, me develop the church curriculum. So these work groups are designed to help me get to know you all and to help you all get to know me. So if you haven't served on one of those work groups, um, be looking for more information uh, coming up. So that is all our announcements for today, and we are glad to have you here. Please bow your heads with me. Lord, we thank you for this day of worship. We pray for the most vulnerable among us. Holy God, keep us mindful of those who lack basic resources in these times. We pray for those who are hungry or without a safe place to stay. We pray for those in homeless shelters, in prisons, in detention centers, where close quarters make social distancing even more difficult. We follow a Christ who looked out for the most vulnerable, the least, the last, and the lost. Help us too in this anxious time to serve first the ones who need the most. Amen. Now let us take a moment to remember our joys and concerns that are in our newsletter. I want to encourage everybody to please continue to send those in. Uh, I read them. It's a good way to help our church stay connected. So we want to thank you for sending those in. Please join me in the pastoral prayer. God is faithful to all of God's promises and loving towards all that God has made. Every day we praise God from now into everlasting. Great is God and most worthy of praise. God's greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your work to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of glorious splendor and of majesty. We will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and we will proclaim your great deeds. We confess that shame keeps us from being vulnerable and authentic. We confess that we are prone to pretense. We confess that our faith is weak sometimes, and we run from you instead of running towards you. We confess that giving up is sometimes easier than wrestling. We are thankful that you are with us in the valley. We are thankful that you welcome our questions. We are thankful that all your promises are yes and amen. We are thankful that your promises will bear good fruit if we don't give up. You promised that you would, that we would be planted like a tree by the waters whose leaves would never wither. Dear God, we come asking for your goodness and mercy. We come asking that your goodness and mercy follow us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil from thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen we will now be singing hymn number 695, God of the Fertile Fields, and we will be singing verses 1 and 2.
scripture, we're still off of the lectionary. And as you can see, we're still having a conversation about uh, God's goodness and mercy. So we're, um, our text today is from the book, of, the book of Habakkuk. It should sound like you're kind of coughing, Habakkuk. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. An oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. Lord, how long will I call for help and you not listen? I cry out to you violence, but you don't deliver. Why do you show me injustice and look at anguish so that devastation and violence are before me? There is strife and conflict abound. The instruction is infective, infective. Justice does not endure. Because the wicked surround the righteous, justice has become war. We spent the last two Sundays looking at goodness and mercy. The introduction message was entitled, Mercy for Our Ducks. We talked about when the world demands perfection from us, God stretches out a hand full of mercy and compassion. In this message, we acknowledge that, that having everything all together is not a necessity. It is in fact okay if we don't have, have all our ducks in a row. Last week's message was titled, Hot Pursuit. Here we looked at the prophet Elijah and the widow, we discuss relying on God's goodness and mercy even when our world is filled with trouble. I've talked a little bit about spending time in monaster monasteries and hanging out with nuns and monks. One of the spiritual formation practices that I've developed is early morning prayer. I have a little prayer ottoman, a little altar, um, that didn't come out right, I don't have a little altar in my house, but I have a little prayer ottoman, a small bench where I pray each morning. So normally I get up between 3 and 4 a.m. to specifically pray for our church family. I have a copy of the newsletter with all the joys and concerns, and I pray over each one um, and give thanks for each one. This is a ritual usually um, that helps me ground for sermon prep. By Wednesday morning, I have some direction as to where we might be headed on Sunday. So this Thursday, I was fairly certain, but after Saturday morning, prayers, I was fairly certain that I was not so certain about Thursday morning certainty. I felt strongly that we needed to continue our conversation on goodness and mercy. So if you have not put your signs up, I want to encourage you to uh, continue to put your signs up and then post your pictures on our Facebook page. This is important. Um, I don't have to rehash all that is going on in our world. There are plenty of reasons to be discouraged. There are plenty of reasons to doubt and fear. That is why it's so very important to keep the promises of God close to our heart. When the world is raging and spewing hatred and stoking fears, we will be tempted to respond. I was watching a documentary about how not to respond during times of conflict and strife. Its main point was not that every, not everything requires an immediate response. That sometimes even if you're right, it is best to wait and reflect on who you are and who you want to be at the end of the day. When it's all said and done, what type of person do you want to be? Hot-tempered, arrogant, hostile toward change, abrasive, dominating? Who do you want to be? Christ-like, forgiving, understanding, vulnerable, adaptable? That is why the promises of God are so important. They act as a touchstone so that we are ever reminded that we are called to be the light in the world. If we have not hid the promises of God in our heart, if we have not meditated on the promises of God, our responses could sometimes cause more harm than good. Our responses either reflect the light or it causes our light to diminish. One of the Psalms put it this way, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee or the way I interpret it, I hold on to your promises so that I won't act like a fool in the face of arrogance, prejudice, and injustice. Again, a really good reason to have a goodness and mercy sign up and post it as a touch tone to remind you and others to let your light shine. Second Corinthians states that all the promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God are a sure thing. Listen, heaven and earth might pass away, but the promises of God will remain. The promise that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. That is a promise. 
that is your insurance that no matter what, everything is going to be okay. I know what you're thinking. Pastor Sana, I have my sign up. I got the promises in my heart and on my lips, but it looks like things are going from bad to worse. I know what you're thinking. But sometimes even good insurance doesn't cover everything. I know what you're thinking. Pastor Sana, am I supposed what am I supposed to do when life is challenging the promises that I'm holding in my heart? Pastor Sonna, what am I supposed to do when the sign on the fridge says goodness and mercy, but the sign on the front door says all hell is breaking loose? Pastor Sonna, how do you explain goodness and mercy to a heart that is broken? How do you explain goodness and mercy to a marriage that has been destroyed? How do you explain goodness and mercy to long-term illness? How do you explain... I believe in the promises, but right now, my problems seem much, much bigger than any promise. This is not a typical sermon. This is more of a teaching slash conversation. Some things we have to live into and grow into. Translation, there will be no pretty bow at the end of the sermon. Habakkuk is an Old Testament minor prophet. Everybody say minor prophet. Minor prophet, thank you. He wasn't a major prophet. He was, he was in the minor leagues. Ha, ha, ha. Y'all saw that coming. He lived and wrote about 600 years before the birth of Christ. He was a very different kind of prophet. Prophet speaks to, to people on behalf of God. Habakkuk was not an ordinary prophet. He didn't speak to the people on behalf of God, but Habakkuk spoke to God on behalf of the people because he did not like what God was doing. Judah had been blessed and now there was corruption and deception and instead of prospering, they were hurting and they were in poverty and he just unleashes on God. Habakkuk has a come to Jesus conversation with God. And he is asking the very same questions that so many of us are asking today. He wanted to know, God, why does it appear that we have more problems than promises? God, I've got your promises in my heart and on my lips and posted on my fridge, but my family, but my job, but RBG, John Lewis, Kobe Bryant, COVID, Christmas and social distancing, God, I can't. God, I'm struggling with the choices and decisions that you're making. I know you could do something about this, God, but you're not. And I don't understand why aren't you coming to our aid? There are three chapters in the book, and we're going to look at the first verses in chapter one. The first verse said, says, Lord, how long will I call for help and you not listen? I cry out violence, but you don't deliver. Sound familiar? Essentially, he has received the prophecy. The word prophecy means utterance. And this is a doom and gloom utterance that he has received. It's doom, it's gloom, it's, a, it's, it's, it's burdensome and, and it's weighty on him. And so he hears it and he's like, I don't like what I'm hearing. He received this and it goes to God. Um, he intercedes, he goes to God on behalf of the people and he asks questions in verse 2. How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? How much, how long, O oh Lord, do I ask for to be saved and you do not save? Why do you make us look at such injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? What I love about Habakkuk is that he's wrong. He's real. His name tells a story. The name Habakkuk means to embrace and wrestle. Habakkuk is doing everything to embrace who he knows God is, but because he's, what he sees doesn't line up with what he believes, he's wrestling to embrace this God. He's wrestling to embrace this God. He's wrestling to embrace what he knows about God and what he sees. And how can I hold on to God and hold on to faith and hold on to hope when everything around me is saying a different story? I want to reiterate. This is not a typical sermon. Some things we have to live into and grow into. Translation. 
There will be no pretty bow at the end of the song. Look at the person sitting closest to you and say, no bows today. How many of you know that sometimes things don't always turn out the way we would like? Sometimes our life doesn't line up with a 30-minute sitcom format. There are some things that we have to wrestle to embrace, that we have to wrestle to come to terms with, that we have to wrestle to accept, that we have to wrestle with. So again, he is struggling to embrace who he knows God to be with what he is seeing with his own eyes. Things aren't adding up, and so he wrestles. He's wrestling to embrace the promise that goodness and mercy shall follow you. Oftentimes you've heard me say there are no tire tracks in the valley because everyone must walk through the valley. You can't speed your way out of the valley. The valley is where we are allowed to wrestle, to question, and even to doubt. The valley is not a field with candy cane and unicorns. It's called the valley because your vision is obstructed on both sides. The path is narrow, rocky, dangerous, and steep. Habakkuk puts, this, puts it this way. Why do you show me injustice and look on anguish so devastating and violence before me? There is strife and conflict. The, the instruction is ineffective. Justice does not endure because the wicked surround the righteous. Justice has become warped. Habakkuk is troubled by God's seemingly absence or inaction. This is a classic sign of someone who is in the valley. The valley is a place where we go to get real with God. It is a place where our faith is forged and molded. It is a place where we cry out, God, where are you? If I were God, have you ever said this? If I were God, I would just... God does not punish us for having a faith crisis or a crisis of belief. Sometimes life can crush you to the brink. Sometimes outcomes are never what anyone could ever imagine, no matter how thought out and well planned. No one saw it coming. When life is knocked the breath out of you, most people believe that you only have two options. Pretend like everything is okay. Just deny anything is wrong. Oh, we're fine. Oh, be positive. Oh, pretend like everything is okay. Is okay. Or another option, surrender to hopelessness. I'm done. I'm done with you. I'm done with it. I'm done with church. I'm done with faith. I'm done with believing for anyone anything better. I believe in a third option, a bit harder option, wrestle to embrace, wrestle to hold on to the truth that we know about God no matter what. We walk by faith and not by sight. God is not asking us to pretend that everything is going to be great. God is not asking us to deny what our hearts are feeling. God is saying to all of us, if you find yourself in the valley, it is okay to be real with me. It is okay to be vulnerable with me. It is okay to be angry. It is okay to feel and ask tough questions. I know what you're thinking. Pastor Sean, are you saying it's okay to question God's motives, actions, and intent? Yes, yes, yes. God is not less because we vocalize that we don't understand. We are not faithless because our hearts are heavy. The only way out of the valley, the only way to really discover who we are is to ask tough questions and then sit and wait for God to answer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. One of my favorite songs in Hamilton is Yorktown, better known as The World Turned Upside Down. The underdog colonies effectively won their independence by defeating the mighty British Empire at the Battle of Yorktown. If Vegas existed in the 1700s, the house would have lost a lot of money on such long odds. In Matthew 21 to 16, Jesus uses the parable of the workers in the vineyard to explain to his 
to his disciples that to understand the kingdom of God, you have to view it as a world turned upside down. God's laws are not the world's laws. No one in the world would believe that those who work for an hour should be paid the same as those, as those who work all day. However, God's God and we're not. It's called grace and we'll just have to deal with it. I once tried to explain to my classroom attendant years ago that whoever is first will be last and whoever is last will be first. So he looked at me like I was from Mars and told me that that statement made no sense. I told her I was quoting Jesus and that he said a lot of crazy things like, love your enemies to name another. She did not understand that Jesus came to change the world upside down. The definition of a world turned upside down according to Wikipedia is to change someone's life completely often in a shocking way. Jesus changed a lot of people's lives so they could see a new world, that is the kingdom of God, beyond this one we're in. If you're new to this Jesus thing or just checking him out, what does this mean for you and for those of us who are followers of this Messiah? In John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as, you, as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. These are comforting words to hear in these times that we find ourselves. Now, as a reminder to my Parkway members, there are three ways to support our ministries. One, by pil bill pay through your bank or setting up an automatic withdrawal from your bank account. Using your debit or credit card online by clicking on the Give Now tab on our website or the old three, the old fashioned way, sending your check to Parkway office. For anyone else who may be searching for a family or a purpose bigger than yourself, consider Parkway. You know that one of the main reasons the colonies were successful that one of the main reasons that the colonies were successful was that it was a people's movement. A world turned upside down is a God movement. Unlike the colonies who declared independence, you need to declare your dependence on the one who created you. He's calling you to this moment, to this movement. You were created to be part of something bigger than, your, than the mundane. In the next few months, Parker will be studying about racial equality, gender equality, and then we are going to discuss how we can be a church of the 21st century. At the end of this video service, you will see our information if you wish to contact us for more of this information. We would love to have you join us for these upcoming studies. Become an active participant in the kingdom of God. Help Parkway be the church that turns the world upside down. We will now be singing our communion hymn for this week and month, Take Our Bread. that we could, we are yours, we 
as a describe as a disciples of Christ Church, uh, we celebrate communion every Sunday, and um, everyone is welcome. We have an open table, so that means anyone who wants to participate in a communion is welcome to participate. So if you're at home, we're going to invite you to also get your elements, whether you get bread or wine or or water and crackers or juicing crackers, whatever you have handy to um, prepare your table, and we will uh, do the communion. So, on the night of his betrayal and arrest, as he shared a meal with his friends, Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave thanks, and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the wine, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my blood shed for you. Now let us take the body of Christ together. And the blood of Christ together. Amen. post-communion prayer, I'm going to say the Isaiah blessing. Please bow your heads. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. Come, you who have no food, come and eat. Come and buy without money, without price. The Lord has made a covenant with you to love you faithfully forever. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. This is the promise. The Lord has said it. Amen. We want to extend an invitation. If you would like to join us or to join our church, please look on the last slide at the end of this uh, program, and we'll have more information about how you can contact us and become a part of this uh, church community. If you don't have a faith community, we would love to have you join us. So um, give us a call, Facebook, or, or text or email, and we can send you more information about what we're all about. So please now uh, receive this benediction. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you there. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Goodness dwells in you. Mercy follows you. God is luring you and wooing you. God has something that God wants to do through you. Wherever you are, believe this and go in the grace and mercy of Christ. Amen. <laughs>